so what's interesting is that when we uh, speak, we all think that what we are speaking is what we're thinking, what's coming from the mind, right? Mm -hmm. But what human design shows us and what the body graph shows us is that when we communicate and what we communicate is really determined by the connection to the throat center if you're defined. Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, the human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Welcome to the Human Design Hive podcast. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, hello. How are you today, Haley? I am good on this stormy morning. Oh, is it stormy there? It is stormy. It's, it's so like, f- well, it's like, it's off the coast stormy. So like oh. when I took Bailey out this morning, I could hear mm-hmm. like the rumbles and it's like mm-hmm. completely off the coast, but it was very rumbly. Mm-hmm. So now you it's just overcast a, here. You have such a beautiful um, view there off of the back of your apartment building, looking out over the rivers and the marshland and everything. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. I would say how different it is when we were talking the other day, because it was pouring all day here and not at your house. We only live... Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe 85 miles apart, maybe? Yeah, it's it's under 100, I think. It's under 100. (laughs) How different the weather can be along the coast, because we both live right on the coast, but Mm -hmm. um, it's quite different. So I was kind of hoping for a little more rain today, but hey, it's still early. (laughs) (laughs) It certainly feels like it wants to. Here we are talking about the weather. It's very (laughs) Here we are talking about the weather. That's not what everybody wants to hear about a week later what the weather was like (laughs) okay this is for us okay (laughs) but we are going to be talking about the throat center today which is going to be our last in the journey around all the centers and the body graph and um i was just thinking about how much time we've spent here in the centers and Mm -hmm. More than I ever anticipated. I mean, really, when we first started with the, I think we started with the spleen, I believe, maybe. Did we start with the spleen? No, I think we started with the- um, The G-Center. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, seemed like the right path to go to talk about. I didn't really plan it out because, well, I am a generator. I don't really plan things out. I just kind of respond and um, to do them all in a row like that. But kind of glad that we have, and I like what we've done. I know that when people are looking at human design and learning about it, of course, everybody wants to know right away, like, what's all my, what's all my gates? What's all the special things about me? Mm -hmm. Right. We all do that. And it's overwhelming and type and profile are certainly very important, but I think something that gets overlooked a lot is the centers and really the meat of the, the system here is the centers and how our defined and undefined areas interact you know it's Mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty basic but it's complex at the same time because there are so many Mm -hmm. variations on it but i've always found that the definition in someone's chart like that is way more insightful than some of the the minor not the minor but the smaller details of the actual gate activations because it can get really complex. What do you think? Yeah, because I mean, like the the gates are only a part of a bigger thing, so you got to look at it more big picture before you really mm-hmm. can really really dive into it. Yeah, it's kind of like I don't want to put it in the context of a problem, but when you are say tackling a problem, <laughs> you have the big overarching theme, you know, like mm-hmm. what you have to look at, and then it can get mired in and details and not not to say that understanding your individual activations and your gates and everything is important it is Mm -hmm. but it really it's really a context of like oh this is this is how i operate but really if you just look at your openness and your definition you just really can really 
make it easier for you as like, say, a projector or a generator to say, okay, I'm a generator, I'm supposed to respond, this is my authority, and I know to look out for certain areas where I'm more likely to take on other people's stuff that's not me. So Mm -hmm. they say it's really about learning about what's not you, (laughs) as opposed to what is you is actually more helpful. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. And uh, anyway, so today is going to be the Throat Center, and we've decided to chunk this up into two episodes because uh, we want to give some background on the Throat Center, but then how many gates does the Throat Center have, Haley? Uh, 11, I think is what we said. Yeah. 11. It's what we said, and it's what the chart says. (laughs) Yes. We concur. (laughs) It checks out. Yeah. And there's a lot of information there in here because... I mean, all the centers are important, obviously, but the throat center gets a lot of attention because it also is one of the centers that plays a lot into type Mm -hmm. because, well, first of all, the throat center is the center for communication and manifestation. So it's like the energy to be able to express and the energy to be able to do, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about verbalizing, but then you're also talking about action. And so biologically, it is around the throat. So it's associated with the the thyroid and the, the parathyroid glands. And this is the, the thyroid system helps regulate metabolic processes and everything and how we digest and how we burn energy and all that stuff, how we are mm-hmm. in the world. Just for your little physio- physiological, physiological component physiological. That, you like, that you like to know which is not my forte to understand or biological say. process or, or, or say. Oh, I forgot to mention we were having coffee together. I finished mine already. Oh, you did? Yeah. We were having coffee together, not having <laughs> coffee alone. We spent the first part of this off air <laughs> enjoying our coffee together. We do. We do. Um, anyway, so the thing about the throat center is that uh, to remember that it plays an important role in the chart, but it is not an awareness center like the spleen and the and the ajna and the solar plexus are awareness mm-hmm. centers, and it's not a motor, so it doesn't have that driving, forcing energy. Not forcing, but mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Um, it is just a purely mechanical. They call it throat center thing. Um, But it still is this major focus and all, like I've said many times, I think already all roads lead to the throat center. All the circuitry is trying to push this energy in some way out into the world, right? Right. That's what the motors are doing. So there is a lot of pressure there on the throat at times. Um, It feels that pressure of something wanting to come out, but it's not always appropriate because there's only, you know, the manifester and the manifesting generator that have that motorized energy to the throat to allow them to clearly get that energy moving. Mm -hmm. The rest of us pretty much have to wait (laughs) (laughs) or be asked or invited to speak. So as I said, the uh, primary function here in the throat center is manifestation through Mm -hmm. communication through language okay right and so because that's really how we um take our understanding and how we interact with people and it's and take our understanding and get it out to the world and how we interact with people is what i should say and it's what separates us from animals basically you know is that they say that when our physical bodies thousands of years ago Wow, lots and lots and lots of years ago. I don't know exactly. <laughs> uh, it was basically when they said our larynx, 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 larynx shifted position, I guess, in our throats. And it became to where we could actually start to form language and, and intentional um, noises, I should hmm. say. Before it was, you know, because you see like animals, they, well, some don't make any noise, but, you know, a lot of them just kind of grunt or grunt or howl or, Mm -hmm. and that's like our oldest 
remember the spleen or not the spleen, sorry, the sacral center, that life force energy, which is in uh, animal species as well. Mm -hmm. I even say in some insects, all that stuff. Speaking of animals, I'm right now watching my neighbor's dog try to chase something up a tree. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> weird dog. Anyways, not that that's a weird behavior for dog. <laughs> it's pretty normal. Just a weird dog. This is my train of thought. So anyways, yes, our, our ability to communicate through language is what sets us apart. And also I think what helped advance our species because we were able to speak to each other, to communicate with each other, mm -hmm. which then creates you know understanding and and everything well hopefully understanding or conflict but it's then i think we could all start to work together in a way we could organize mm -hmm. we could do things because we could express what was in our heads makes sense language is fascinating mm -hmm. like how there are so many and then they all like are saying the same thing but they're all so different it is so interesting like how it? does it come about like why are there so many different ones? It's it's kind of like know. space. <laughs> it's kind of like space. <laughs> I can start spiraling on it. Well, it's true. I mean, even now, you know, there's there are thousands of languages, I believe, because you think of all the different individual, even tribes in small parts of the world, or even, yeah. or even say like, um, even though it's the same language, different way of speaking it. Like when we we're in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. They speak Spanish, but it's a little different than mm -hmm. Spanish in Spain or, um, you know, or Mexico. Or Mexico, right? Everybody has a different pronunciation and different way of saying things, which is really, mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, obviously, the same thing happens in English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is really interesting that how we communicate in so many different ways. And it's, mm -hmm. I think, language is. Um, I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand because I don't, I'm not fluent in two languages. I know it's possible, but the people that can, I think it's fascinating people that not just can speak two languages fluently, but three, like four, friend. or five. Yeah. Like my friend who speaks English, Russian, uh, Spanish. Spanish. She's probably picking up another language as we speak, but, <laughs> but that's all immersive stuff. Yeah. It's where she's mm -hmm. lived and who she's married to. She definitely has learned all those, but. I would love how many times have we attempted to start learning a different language? I'm I'm back on Italian. Are you back on Italian? I know. Yes, I have a fun. I think an eight day streak. I remember remember last fall your your dad was in Hawaii and thought he was gonna stay there working when he was mm -hmm. only there for three weeks, but I was trying to learn Hawaiian. <laughs> I was I was making traction on that one, but that's a really interesting language because it really only got written down in the last hundred years mm -hmm. before that it was never written down which is really really fascinating it's a beautiful yeah. language too but um anyway so I digress <laughs> so yeah as we said the, that primary function here of this uh center is language verbal communication mm -hmm. which we do a lot of <laughs> we are communicating and in other words we're not designed to be isolated from each other the mm -hmm. ability to communicate with each other like we said ensures our survival and the quality of our relationships because like i said we can express what we're thinking what we're feeling and um and what we'll see as we dig into the gates later on there are you can see the gates there that are really designed for those purposes i should say so it's really interesting when you start digging into this so like I said, it's like a um, the 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 throat center is not a motor, but it's more like a gearbox in your car. Mm -hmm. So it it can't on its own set things into motion, but it has a real uh, deep connection and relationship to the motors, which can set it into motion. So it helps the energy is there, it gets to it, and then it helps decide. Phew, which way it's going helps to kind of transform it speak yeah and what is going to speak and so um there's a lot of pressure to speak as we said and so quite often people feel that pressure and are prone to either speak say to things too soon or too late mm. <laughs> too soon and too soon 
But what's really interesting, as we said, there's 11 gates there and your own voice, how you express comes from the specific gate activations or definition there might be there that's connected to the throat, if that makes sense. So you're going to have gate activations and you're also, if you're defined, you'll have channels, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then also being undefined there, maybe this completely open is going to have a totally different experience, but it has a huge um, impact in how we interact with the world knowing your own voice and what you're here to express or to do as well as which gates like we were saying earlier what parts of you are open to amplification meaning you're open Mm -hmm. there you can begin to relax and wait for the proper time to engage with others in ways that are correct for you because the golden rule here for the throat center really it's for everything, but (laughs) is to follow your strategy and authority and the timing will always be perfect. Mm -hmm. And you will always have a way that whatever you say um, or whatever your actions are will be received with less resistance or confusion or distortion. And you can have the full impact that you intended because I mean, strategy and authority is important everywhere, but when you think about how this Mm -hmm. center in particular is how we actually physically interact and speak and do and all those other things Mm -hmm. in our world around us, you can see how uh, really important it is to to wait. (laughs) Yeah, because you don't want things to get misconstrued. No. So then, so like I said, primary function is that verbal component, but then the secondary uh, function, the manifestation as action, the doing part, which mm-hmm. we said is, in, is possible when you have a motor to the throat. All right. So of course that means manifester, manifesting generator. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the people who are the, the doers in the world who can, can set things in motion and bring forth what they envision. However, remember manifesting generators they do have that motor connection but they still have to have something to respond to first they can't just because the generator aspect yeah i think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to redo the um intro here because i'm telling you you're not so much a newbie anymore you're just learning all the stuff (laughs) (laughs) you're doing good um so when there is this throat connection this energy to the throat from a motor uh, they can feel a stronger urge to be impulsive or to succumb to um, the tendency to talk too much or do too much or to give energy that to every impulse that comes your way. You said this <laughs> Their is way. If, if it's motorized? The motor. Yeah, because there is that um, that energy there that can get the throat, you know, I don't want to say moving, but energized going, going, but, you know, even with manifestors, you know, everybody likes to say in generalizations that manifestors can just do whatever they want, whenever they want, but it's still, Mm -hmm. it's not really true because, because you might have an emotional manifestor, meaning they have to wait it out first. But in speaking with, um, manifestors that I, I know, but also, um, other people's experience with manifestors, there is that still waiting period that they have to have their own internal time and know when the timing's right. Mm-hmm. But um, so there is still this need to 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 pay attention to like to... wait and take stock. Mm-hmm. But like we said, they have like the the internal when the time is right internally, mm-hmm. they can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once. Yeah, once they know it's the right. And then, of course, if they're a manifesting generator, as we said, they have to respond to something. And let's not forget what the strategy is for these types is to inform first. So that's another component that even though they have a motorized throat and they can do, there's if they don't start informing people of what they're thinking or what they want to do. What are you laughing at? Just you how about you said dad? that. Yeah. How it's helped when you 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 kind of have that little aspect that you realize Mm -hmm. about how he does things Mm -hmm. that it helps. And you know what? And it's funny because we give him a lot of flack sometimes, but I am paying attention more of 
that he does actually inform quite a bit and um and things do go easier and he doesn't know he's doing it because he won't listen <laughs> to much of this stuff no. <laughs> <laughs> you know but i know it and i realize sometimes that um he is telling me what he's going to do or what he wants to do and he and i'm like okay and i get to decide if you know i'm on board or not but i do um notice things do go much easier between us when he lets me know ahead of time what he's thinking of doing <laughs> it is help. And then also it doesn't bother him as much if I'm like, no, I'm okay. I don't really think I'm going to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I just get out of his way and it, and it works. <laughs> Anyways. So like I said, you know, all this stuff is happening, whether we know about it or not. Mm -hmm. It's just this information gives you the insight into it to be aware of it and, you know, work with it more intentionally if you want to. But I'm definitely finding that people are already living their design a lot of times um, without realizing it. And it can just help enhance their um, their experience and meet even less resistance by paying more attention to it. So anyways, um, OK, so. Seven, let's talk about the defined throat center here for a minute. So 72% of the population has a defined throat center. That's much higher than I was anticipating. Oh, yeah? Were you thinking 50-50 yeah. or? No, less than that. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm, because you have a undefined throat? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I have a defined throat. You have an undefined throat, mm -hmm. right? Um so what's interesting is that when we uh, speak, we all think that what we are speaking is what we're thinking, what's coming from the mind, right? Mm -hmm. But what human design shows us and what the body graph shows us is that when we communicate and what we communicate is really determined by the connection to the throat center if you're defined. So there's only three connections to the ajna to the mind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that means there's eight other connections to the rest so most of it comes from the body mm -hmm. we are expressing what the body says and right, so this right. is where, where people can um you know it's it's like the messaging hub of the body of what is happening and it is what uh directs the th the throat center is what directs how this information is communicated. And so, which is also why people get frustrated in their communication or they say, that's not what I meant to say is because they think it's what they have to say is coming from their mind, but unless they have a connection to the mind, it's not, it's coming from somewhere else. It's coming from their instinct or it's coming from their emotions or it's coming from somewhere else from their identity. <laughs> and so, it's interesting when you look at it that way. So like I said, it can mm -hmm. come from the, the throat can express or act from six different centers. It's connected to six centers, right? Yeah. So it's directly connected to the Ajna, the solar plexus. I shouldn't say directly. It's connected. It can connect to the Ajna, the solar plexus, mm -hmm. the G center, the will center, the sacral and the spleen. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, direct connection. I don't know why I said indirect. Yes, direct connection. I mean, it's just missing too. <laughs> right. Well, but yeah, because it doesn't have a connection to the head center or the root center, but it connects to all the other ones. <laughs> so if looking at your body graph, if the G center is connected to the throat, remember this is for defined throats. If the G okay, center the G is center is the right little below. triangle. No, that's, right that's the heart. Okay. The, the diamond. diamond. Mm -hmm. the okay. Yes. The throat. Then it's the G center identity direction. So if your G center is connected, then your identity and who you are is going to speak. Makes so, sense. Mm -hmm. So when they're speaking, you need to realize that anyone with this configuration has what they call a very vulnerable voice because it is a voice that comes directly from from their let's say heart you know mm -hmm. it's who they are speaking and they can't change that they can't change who they are so would this be kind of like you know how people say 
oh, they wear their heart on their sleeve. Is that kind of like kind of in what a, this would be? In a way, yeah. And yes, because if that is their connection, then whenever they speak, it is definitely it's coming from how they see themselves, who they are, and they can't change that. And it's very much connected to your identity and love and all this, you know, these things. And so it can be very vulnerable to criticism mm -hmm. because like I said, they are speaking from their heart and their true identity and right. they can take criticism very harshly and very deeply. They literally can take it to heart. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And so they um, may also feel very uncomfortable with what they say and how they express themselves because again they may think that what they're going to say is like coming from their mind but mm -hmm. when they actually open their mouth to speak especially if they've been forced to speak or whatever um it is not you know it's very exposing to them All right it could you know and it could also um there's this one connection the um the 1020 comes from the uh, G center to the, to the throat, um, which we're going to talk about the gates later on, but is referred to as the verbal gunslinger because <laughs> Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> well, because we'll, you know, we'll talk about it later, but it really is this voice that is speaking directly to um, how their sense of love and identity in the moment right then and there it can it can come out very harsh this this um when people are pushed to speak or they're in a situation they're uncomfortable with and they may know that they shouldn't say something negative or hurtful but when they open their mouths <laughs> what comes out is what they're, you know, how they are feeling about and, mm -hmm. and it can be hurtful, but it's usually not intended and it's usually not long lasting. It's just what was happening right then can cause them if they're feeling hurt to lash out very harshly, let's mm -hmm. just say. So that's that vulnerability there that can cause people to react harshly. Okay. So if the will center is connected to the throat, so the will center over there on the little triangle, the triangle on the right hand side, off to the side of the G center there, then it's the ego that is going to speak. And what that means is that these people will tend to always speak from the position of I or me or mine, because they are literally talking about themselves in the world, mm -hmm. in the material world. And they are designed to speak about themselves it's their true nature and generally people often can respond to this voice with resistance or projection because in society i guess you'd say it can be seen as well they call it egotistical right to talk about yourself mm -hmm. or narcissistic exactly and they may often hear people say well why do you always talk about yourself or why is it always about you why are you so selfish right but if this is how they are designed to to speak um that they can't help it that is just how they are and there is a there's a purpose to it i mean it is about mm -hmm. you know there's a purpose to everything but if they're unaware that this is where their voice comes from and, and you can have more than one connection to the throat but and especially this is this would be a motor to the throat so this could be like a manifester or manifesting generator um they probably when they were younger or even, you know, have gone through life feeling this urge to express from this center, that's not really conscious because they're not trying to, it just happens. And mm -hmm. so they probably received a lot of conditioning around speaking from that voice, right? Making them think there's something wrong with them because remember that, um, percentage of the population that has that connection between the throat and the will center is not that large. And so it is just the one connection to the will center, right? Uh, yes. Through the 4521. 4521. Yeah, I should know that. Yes, it is. It is that one connection there, which and that energy there, that connection is rather 
uh, which you know we'll go into is rather a commanding voice. Mm -hmm. And so it, um, it can uh, put people off. But when they, if they've received this criticism from others, this, you know, uh, conditioning from parents or well-meaning, whatever, don't talk about yourself so much. And why does it always have to be about what you want? Um, They can suppress their voice, but that, and a lot of things we'll see that when you work against your nature, it can cause physical issues in your body because you're suppressing this energy. And this suppressed energy here could manifest as problems with the heart or the stomach because that's what the that area is ruling so they can speak about themselves but also you know just kind of read the room (laughs) wait for the right time you still gotta you know trust your strategy and authority to know when the right time would be to Mm -hmm. express what it is you have to say um right yeah so just if that's your connection, don't feel bad about talking about yourself. That's just how you're designed. And it has value because this leadership quality too. So it has value. Okay. So um, the throat to the spleen center, as you could imagine. Oh, we're jumping over there. Okay. Throat to the mm-hmm. spleen. Yeah. There's a couple connections there. Um, your words are going to come from your intuition and your instincts. And it also is your own personal taste like what you prefer basically it's a spontaneous voice and these people really can articulate how they're feeling in the now because that's what the spleen is all about right that's the spleen mm-hmm. what usually comes out of their mouths quite often is not really what they expect as we said <laughs> right and because it is spontaneous And so that could give them a sense of inadequacy about how their mind works because, you know, they might, or they might have trouble accessing it. Yeah. I mean, they could just open their mouth. It could be random, Haley. (laughs) Things could just pop out of your mouth. Wow. Yeah. You Haley did. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you don't have a connection there, right? No, I don't. No, but um, you do have a defined spleen. Mm -hmm. So, um that sense of inadequacy or fear of speaking or what they might say it's only because you know we've been um or they've been conditioned to expect that like we said that the mind is the one that's doing the talking but it's not it's their instincts and their own personal preference and it's like in the now and Mm -hmm. so they're uh someone with a spleen connection is always going to be giving kind of um a running commentary about how their body their actual body is feeling especially with their if they're uncomfortable and so if you think about it, this is the one connection where the body actually can express because it's very physical. This um, mm-hmm. spleen awareness is body awareness. So since it's like in the now, mm-hmm. when they when they speak, it's in the now, could they be sometimes perceived maybe as like wishy-washy? Um, because I mean, if it's in the, like if it's in the now, like how the body is in the now, like I could be changing all the time. That's so if true. they say one thing this minute and the next minute, it's something different because things have changed mm-hmm. and, you know, people perceive speaking from the throat as coming from the head. So they could be maybe perceived as inconsistent. Wishy-washy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. You could say that because yes, uh, conditions change from, from moment to moment. Absolutely. You know, it's a, uh, you know, they've often, said especially with splenic awareness that um and if that is your main awareness center like it's your um, authority then yes you can change from moment to moment what you want to do and to be comfortable with that's okay for you to Mm -hmm. do that because i think the example they give is like you have an invitation to go somewhere you know go to dinner and you're like yeah i want to go i really want to go but then day comes and you get there and you go start to go and you're like I don't want to go you know and that happen all the time (laughs) yeah and you know maybe even to the point of like getting ready to leave and you're like I just don't want to and to start I know and that's very hard to get comfortable with because we made plans and everything else but there's something that the spleen is telling them to not 
go. It's not worth your time or your energy, or it's going to be detrimental to you Mm -hmm. or something, which like I said, this is when you see a situation like that and what you're bringing up, you can see how pervasive conditioning in society in general is, you know, there's these expectations we put on each other to do what's it well i just said expectations do what's expected <laughs> <laughs> the social norm like it's impolite to just cancel plans or it's yeah. or it's like you said inc- you're wishy-washy if you change your or, or you're flaky because yeah you said you were going to go but then you don't go because you don't want to go anymore mm-hmm. but then that is overriding your inner authority of what is guiding you energetically to what's correct for you and so that's you know We can see how over time people get into life's (laughs) lifestyles, situations that they they don't want to be in. And they wonder how they got there. And it's because you're constantly overriding what your body and your instincts and your energy is telling you is correct for you. So it's a very good point. Yes. But then again, it can also, with this connection from the throat to the spleen, can also give the ability to have spontaneous clarity over a situation. Cause like I said, if the spleen is like, ah, yeah, here we go. This is what mm-hmm. you need to know. And so, like I said, it's, um, it's your instincts could be immediately expressed. The body can actually talk and it can be a voice that comes out of fear or out of like cellular memory of an mm-hmm. event of the past. Um, because it's the only place that the body can actually communicate in language and who knows what it's going to say (laughs) because it's not coming from the mind but just to be comfortable like you said with that spontaneous voice that someone would have with that connection so if you have a connection from the throat to the solar plexus Mm -hmm. what would you think that voice would be about from emotion that's what I would say. I would say you're right. Someone who's always <laughs> going to be expressing their feelings and emotions or not, um, meaning they should, but they have to do it at the right time. So mm-hmm. there, this could be someone who has a sense of emotional drama in their words because they are always speaking about their emotions. They could, their words are, they can their voice, I should say, can vacillate from hope to despair. These are the people that could be very, at least dramatic in how they speak because how they speak is affected by their emotional wave, right? right? Where they are. And so they probably picked up conditioning around it and they've probably been told, stop being so emotional. (laughs) Yeah, that a lot with emotional people. Um, Maybe learn to control yourself. You can't be so emotional when you're talking. Don't be so dramatic, all these things. And they can't change that. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be detrimental to them to not speak about how they're feeling or what their emotions are. I mean, it's, it's how they're designed. Right. Um, Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. So if they are going to suppress that voice of their emotions it can be a risk to their health and they can literally give up hope of ever being themselves like any of us if we're told our what we're saying is you know inappropriate at the time it can be can be hard to hear and we'll probably get more into this as we talk about the individual connections of what that looks like okay so if you have the throat connected to the ashna this is the only connections that you can literally speak your mind Uh uh uh-huh (laughs) uh-huh The mind is designed to speak and talking directly out of their minds. They can verbalize their thoughts and their mental concepts and they fit into the cliche of someone who just speaks their mind. (laughs) For all the others out there whose mind is not connected to the throat, right? Mm -hmm. Or whose Ajna centers are open and undefined, it can be even more frustrating in life that they never say what they think think they want to say as we talked about earlier and Mm they um can often think that there's something wrong with them or that people don't listen to what they have to say because again we're getting things confused here about what's actually talking or who what part of you is actually speaking okay and so lastly the throat to the sacral this is yeah there's one connection i know you're like huh (laughs) 
3420 I manifesting see it. <clears throat> generator channel it is the life force that sacral energy that speaks but only naturally in response and so there's a unique connection here because there's only one channel like i said mm -hmm. that connects this is 3420 manifesting generator channel because sacral throat um since the, the the throat speaks to through whatever it's connected to and the mm -hmm. sacral responds energetically through whatever it's connected to so they so one works in response and one is the voice of that response basically okay. so this can for people with this connection it could literally be the words are so fast it could just kind of like rush and bubble out of them because it's like speaking before it even really knows what is coming out <laughs> maybe as some would say word vomit <laughs> <laughs> maybe sometimes but there's a lot of energy in those words because it's charged with that um you know sacral energy mm -hmm. and th they do say that you know, with the sacral response for generators, it's this nonverbal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, whatever. But they do say, especially with this 3420, if someone has that connection, a lot of times the words are faster than them, than their body response, if that makes sense. Cause it's a, it's a fat. So they, if you're working with someone with sacral response and they have that connection, it is probably more appropriate and easier for them to say yes or no than it is mm -hmm. for them to like, feel it in their body does that make sense because right. it's a very fast connection mm -hmm. so so being able to see and understand where the voice comes from based on your own unique design allows us to see that we and recognize that we we can't and we shouldn't be trying to fix people by trying to make us all the same mm -hmm. and think that we all are able to speak from our minds because we're not <laughs> yeah if we and, were all the same that would be very boring yeah 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 it is but that's you know what we've done i mean it, it it's kind of what happens as we move from individual to tribal to you know collective but we live in a world now where we're still going to have our little groups our little tribes but tribe doesn't ensure our survival anymore really we're moving to a point of how can we take our individual selves our individual gifts and survive together in the collective what can we individually do to help everyone not just our mm -hmm. tribe some are slower on that <laughs> trajectory than others There's a lot of tribal some are fighting stuff. it yeah a lot of tribal stuff still happening in the world but you know what it doesn't um you know, Marianne Williamson always say it doesn't take a majority for change to happen. And I know mm -hmm. she didn't come up with this, but she talks about it a lot. It's, you know, you, there's a tipping point around, I think they say around 11% of the population, 12% of the population of, of any group that once you have even the smaller amount of people, that's when change starts to occur. It's not when there's finally the majority and everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. It's those little individual aspects of people that start to say, Hey, we shouldn't be doing that anymore. We need mm -hmm. to come up with a new way. So anyways, I digress. Okay. All right. So most importantly, if you have a defined throat, remember, yes. look at where your connection is, get a better understanding of where your voice is actually coming from. It'll be easier for you. So the undefined throat center would be 28% of the population, including yourself. <laughs> But it's not um, completely open. No, you have an undefined throat center. Yes, you have one gate, yes. gate 45. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the not self theme here of the undefined throat member, because these are areas where we're receiving, amplifying, reflecting back. And so we mm -hmm. tend to identify with what they call not self behaviors in the system, which means that you behave in a certain way that really isn't how you're supposed to be, but you take it on because you think it's you because it feels intense. Um, but the not self theme of the undefined throat center is that of trying to attract attention hmm. because 
people with undefined throat centers can be afraid that they won't be noticed or heard. So they jump at, now this is not everybody, but they can jump at opportunities or chances to think of ways to attract attention. Hmm. And um, they can, I mean, honestly, you would think someone with a defined throat center has more like throat energy and they'd be the ones that are super talkative and everything, but it's actually undefined throat centers at times in groups that could be the more expressive, chatty, always talking, verbalizing. Which makes sense because if it's a smaller percentage of mm -hmm. the population, Mm -hmm. then they probably are more surrounded by defined throats, by that consistent Mm -hmm. present energy that they're then reflecting out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, you're a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And they, you're a lot and they can easily succumb to that pressure from feeling all that throat energy, like you said, to talk or to act or to make an Mm -hmm. impression or to, to interrupt or to be the life of the party kind of thing, you know, because it just feels like they need to talk. I just need to talk, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> what they don't realize is that they can naturally attract attention if they if they wait for an invitation to speak. That the it's almost like their silence is their their silence is their attraction. Yeah. Right? The quiet one in the room. <laughs> the quiet one, they're like, what are they thinking? Yeah. Yeah, because what if they, they wait. Say? And it's, it's uncomfortable and it's difficult because there is going to be that pressure and there is this feeling that people aren't going to, I mean, you have an undefined throat, you know, you might feel like you have to say something. I got to jump in here. I got to do something or else they won't hear me. Does that mm-hmm. sound? Sometimes. Appropriate? I mean, mm-hmm. it definitely depends on like the group that I'm in and how comfortable I am with the people. But yeah, I mean, there's just sometimes where I'm like, I need to, I feel like I need to contribute something to the conversation. Mm-hmm. And, um, and being a projector on top of that, definitely needing to wait for invitations because undefined throats that speak without waiting often either not heard, misconstrued communication problems. And same can be said for a projector is that they can often not be recognized for what they're contributing because mm-hmm. um, they didn't wait. So your authority will let you know that when it's time to speak or not. And 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 it doesn't mean you have to always be like mute and sitting around in a corner but when you have something valuable to contribute it's almost like the um energy in the room will sense that Mm -hmm. if you're silent more than if you're trying to force it out because if you're trying to force it out it'll probably come out a word jumble anyhow (laughs) yeah which is half of what i say (laughs) (laughs) but it's also i mean this this authority here this um foreign open i mean excuse me undefined throat is there for a reason because it's it's trying to help you not waste energy basically right when you are going to communicate with others right it's just like you've you've got it but just wait until someone recognizes it um, hold hold <laughs> so yeah so without this knowledge and someone um has an undefined throat and you know has this experience over and over again of feeling this pressure and feeling and i i have a defined throat but i can relate to this as well because even though i have a defined throat it's not motorized and so i still have to wait to speak as well Mm -hmm. and I look back over my life and you can feel the difference between when I am responding and being invited in to share what I have to say, what I'm thinking, as opposed to when I just used to just want to tell everybody, right? Where is, where does your definition come from? 4323. Oh, okay. So you are, you are, you can just speak your mind. Yeah, it was difficult. It's a knowingness of speaking what I what I think I know, but I can't back it up with facts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just for, what is it? Genius to freak. Mm-hmm. That's that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, and I also have gate eight activated, but it's not connected to the G Center. But um, yeah, so I can and I can feel right now, I can think back and feel like how it feels when I know I probably was just 
word vomiting or I was just trying to get a point across or um, even when like speaking with your dad sometime when I want to share something with him, but it it's like not the right time. I can tell like if I'm excited about something, I, um, I've learned to not just like push words out there just to fill mm-hmm. up space. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a lot of what we do with these either non-motorized throats or, you know, undefined throats is, is that's that pressure, that feeling of. I think, I feel like in, um, in our society in general, like there's something wrong with silence. Like mm-hmm. if you're in silence or no one's speaking, like, I feel like a lot of times people feel like they need to fill, fill mm-hmm. the void. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like elevators. Oh, please don't talk to me in an elevator. <laughs> I don't want to. The pressure, right? <laughs> I mean, that's probably been the, the greatest relief of pressure in a modern society is cell phones that you can get in an elevator and not feel pressured to speak to anyone anymore. You're like, oh, I got to look at my phone. <laughs> but yeah, elevator is like a little lab, you know, of hmm, what's going to happen now. And do we have to make that god awful small talk? <sighs> small talk. I really don't want to do that. Oh, hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? And uh, yeah, it's it's painful. Don't, don't speak to me in an elevator. <laughs> but um, anyway, so someone with an undefined throat, if they have been, you know, experiencing this pressure to talk and speaking too much and out of turn and everything, then it can get them to a place where they just completely shut their voice down altogether because it's just kind of they can become afraid to say anything because they've worked against their strategy and authority of knowing when to speak that it always just seems to be wrong and that they can't communicate effectively but really if a defined throat is designed to speak through what it's connected to you know that's consistent that's what definition does that's your consistent voice but undefined throats are inconsistent in how they speak it's literally going to depend on who they're around what voice right. they connect with what voice they activate because it's going to be dominant as to how they speak is going to be determined by who they're around i think i just said that in a different way mm-hmm. but <laughs> like i said the person with the undefined throat could be the person that does most of the talking in the group. And what's interesting is that how this can play out in relationships as well. And it can be very influential, this definition of a throat in, in um, relationships. So say there's an undefined throat and a defined throat in a relationship. And let's say the defined person's, connection is through the will center right and that is the voice of i have i am i not i am i have i want i need you know it's this right me materialistic want. yeah right so whatever is expressed in this relationship is going to come through that that definition right so you'll have these two people that are always talking about me and what I want and what I need. Right. And Mm -hmm. actually the person with the undefined throat is going to come off as the one that seems more (laughs) selfish or whatever. And so without the knowledge of what's speaking here, I mean, you can imagine you have two people in a relationship and both of them are just focused on what they want. Yeah. And then I'm sure arguments about like, why is it only what you want? Why isn't it what I want? Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. But if you have this knowledge, you can be like, Hey, this is just, this is just mechanics here of what's happening. You know, Mm -hmm. I could probably listen to you more and understand you better. If I let you speak from that voice and realize it's not personal. It's not that they don't care what you want, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just how they speak. It's how they express. And, but, you know, we put up so many defenses around ourselves all the time and, and, um, but yeah, if you have an understanding, if your partner just is going to speak that way, it doesn't mean they don't care about you and don't mm-hmm. care about what you want. It just means that's how they have to talk. And I think you just have to so, listen and understand. Yeah. And so I think it's beautiful that we could solve so many relationship problems that way. <laughs> um, so also parenting children with undefined throats. 
which you are, which I did, which I did speak for you a lot, didn't I? Oh, yes. <laughs> you were quiet a lot. Well, I allowed it to. <laughs> I know. I think about it. I didn't realize it until you guys were like later, later, like high school that I was like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, I'm always speaking for you. Why am I doing that? I, I didn't intend to shut down your voice, but I didn't ever gave you time to respond quick because mm-hmm. I didn't know these things about you. I didn't know you were a projector. I didn't know you had an undefined throat. So I didn't. So when someone would ask you a question, I wanted to make it easier for you, I guess, to mm-hmm. answer. Like you said, this filling up the space. Mm-hmm. You know, an adult asks a child a question and the child doesn't answer or just looks uncomfortable. I think more you were just, you always looked uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, I was shy, still am kind of shy Mm -hmm. that uh, I would just try to relieve that for you. But what's interesting is to say that children with undefined throats, this is very interesting, may develop language and speaking later than others. Which I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that they have to be allowed time to learn to speak. Right. That there's. Mm -hmm. No need to be nervous or panic, which I know a lot of parents now I'm speaking generally and I'm speaking from my viewpoint as a child or a parent of adult children. I know there are very specific conditions for children and parents are concerned of of when their children start speaking. Mm -hmm. There can be actual things that attribute it to it, but I think we are so hyper vigilant at times now with all the information that we have that we're almost looking for problems. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to offend anybody with what I'm saying. I'm only talking about my viewpoint, but I know that you did not start speaking until almost two. Mm-hmm. Like you communicated with me fine. <laughs> I was probably just reading your open ear to find head and Ajna. <laughs> I was just I was just giving you what I needed through my brain that's, that's probably you know that's funny we were just that just occurred to me you know also when I'm speaking for you it's because I have a defined throat and I maybe energetically could be tapping you're just picking what... it up because I mean when you would answer for me it was like what I was thinking basically <laughs> so funny oh, I love how this works um, <laughs> but yeah you and I I always had this theory, which I will share here. Um, This is again, just my own observation, but I noticed with my kids and I would watch you in comparison to other children around the same age, that a lot of times the ones that were speaking early were developing slower in their physical abilities as far as um, body awareness and agility. (laughs) Because in particular, you were very, like I said, you were very self-contained. You were attached to me at the hip Mm. most of the time, but you had your own process and your own way of doing things. And um, you were very sure-footed, you you know, I mean, you had a few gaffes here and there, a few scars falling down, but. I have quite a few scars. (laughs) But for the most part, the way you interacted with the world and you manipulated objects and you were able to climb and move and get around and walk without falling down a lot um but you didn't speak but then so my main memory point here is being in an airport with you and your brother i think he was around no he wasn't around yet but you were little you weren't speaking yet Mm -hmm. maybe i think i was pregnant and i watched this child that seemed like a baby (laughs) (laughs) should not be speaking but this child was like speaking in full (laughs) sentences but could not get up and walk more than three feet without falling down you like it was literally like it its body was a mess (laughs) (laughs) but its speech was great you know i was like huh and i just started noticing more i just paid attention and maybe i was just confirming my own bias but (laughs) I I just noticed that, but yeah, so kids with an undefined throat can speak later, a little later because they are finding their own, their own voice. And so if we're, um, they will speak if there's not too much pressure put on them early on the throat to, um, to speak, to say 
just because we always tell kids right away and this is how we get out of our Use say, your girl response all that stuff right undefined and you have a say girl response to be like yeah speak now say it properly you know use mm-hmm. your words exactly exactly and um yeah i guess you know i don't i don't remember pressuring you to speak obviously because i did all the talking for you <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so if they are pressured to speak too early or too much, you know, they can um, experience difficulties in articulating what it is they really want to say because they're trying to, they have that pressure put on them. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, if this child is allowed to develop at their own pace, they could also have an incredible gift for mastering language or different languages. So they can, um, because remember, these are your openness is your area of, of um, wisdom and expertise over time as well, because you are feeling how everyone around you uses their voice and you understand different ways of using mm-hmm. your voice and how to articulate. Um, anyways, so... And that is really the gift of the throat center is being able to mirror back those voices to the people around them. So it can make them actually rather gifted speakers. Right. People with open or excuse me, undefined throats can more easily connect with an audience because literally they can energetically read the room of when they then speak, whatever is going to come out is what is going to connect with the people in the room because they're literally using their voices to right. connect. They're back reflecting with them. what their, what their energy is. Mm-hmm. And I have another example of this is that I'm my Marianne Williamson. <laughs> um, you know, she speaks for a living. She's an author and a speaker, but when I uh, campaigned with her on the campaign trail here in South Carolina, you know, places that we went where you would think this, this, um, this like white, little hole in the wall place you yeah, went to. Yeah. This, this, uh, woman walking into some of these areas that they had no idea who she is. They did not know, um, like her background, her history, her principal, anything. They didn't mm-hmm. know anything about her. And I would watch her. She always, always, always can connect with an audience and that's people really resonate with what she has to say. And I think it's because she knows exactly, and she doesn't prepare speeches. You know, she literally has an idea maybe of what she's going to talk. She has a lot of openness in her chart. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of, she's a generator, but she has a lot of openness and, Mm -hmm. um, she can literally say whatever needs to be said in a way that gets heard on a level like I've never seen anybody else able to do. <laughs> it is truly her gift for sure. Um, and those, so also since the throat center is about actions mm-hmm. and speaking, it's really telling on how you speak and how you're acting. If you have an undefined throat, who or what is conditioning you? Because if you're acting in certain behaviors or if you are speaking in a certain way that doesn't feel is not, you know, normal for you or whatever, mm-hmm. you can kind of see in your environment. Oh, <laughs> like if you feel like you're talking about your feelings around more pe- different people, it's more, oh, somebody here might have a defined <laughs> throat with, a, you know, will or a solar plexus connection or, mm-hmm. you know, it's very interesting. It's very mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. So your brother has a defined throat. Where would you think? He speaks ooh, from. Ooh, ooh, okay. Uh, I don't know. You sure? <laughs> we talk about it all the time. Probably people listening right now are like, Haley. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. No, I know he has the genius to freak channel. So mm-hmm. he's from the Ajna. Yeah. So he is speaking his mind as well. And yeah, yeah, he is. Gets Ian, definitely. Sometimes. <laughs> Ian, definitely. He can have mine. Um, yeah, so, okay, let's see if there's anything else before we, um, maybe close it out for right now, before we get into the actual gates in our next episode, because there's a lot to cover, but Mm -hmm. we can just recap real quick, the throat center, um, when it's defined or undefined in its natural state, the defined throat is able to speak and act, you know, um, Mm -hmm. if they're undefined, they need to be quiet. 
I mean, they're designed to be silent. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> the gifts of the Define Center, consistent, reliable uh, communication, knowing where its voice comes from mm -hmm. means it can speak what's true to them, their own truth, which is, you know, one of those hot buzzword topics, speaking your truth. And if it's connected mm -hmm. to the motor, a motor, it has the capacity to act and have that satisfaction of like getting things done and moving forward in life. If the undefined throat, the natural gifts is a more versatile, spontaneous voice um, that has that capacity to speak, depending on who it's with, it can mirror its environment. It can connect easier with other people's voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of flexibility there in how they speak, but they have to wait to speak, be asked. And uh, yeah, so those are your gifts there. I think we covered a lot of stuff and I think we'll just uh, probably put a pause button on here and wait till the next episode to dig into all 11 gates. Are you excited? So many gates. I am. So many gates, me too. All right. So we appreciate everybody listening today for this overview about the throat center. And this is again, the last center in the series here of going through all nine centers. And I hope mm -hmm. everybody's getting a lot of value out of this. So don't forget that if you haven't already, if you feel so inclined to give us a little uh, rating, five star rating would be great if you really like us because, but we're not pressuring you. We're not pressuring you, but I mean, really, if you look at a four star rating, you're like, what's wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think we're pretty five star, but that's I mean, just me. They can have their opinions. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But cause a rating is a rating is a rating, you know, like they say, uh, the old, even bad press is good press, you know, PR, whatever mm -hmm. you're getting mm -hmm. attention. That's what we're mm -hmm. looking for is the more uh, ears that we can have listening to us. That's what ratings help do is yeah. it brings attention to the podcast and the ranking uh, reviews are great, but rate uh, ratings are just, you know, shows that people are interacting with the podcast mm -hmm. and we can help get the word out faster and to more, more people. people. So we'd really appreciate it. All right. So we'll sign off for now and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode and I'll talk to you later, Haley. So bye. Bye. Well, you made it all the way to the end of today's episode. So you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening. 